Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. So this video is a coding interview basics video, which is going to cover the general procedure we should follow in the coding interview, and the expectations and the red flags we try to avoid in the coding interview. So if you wonder why you failed the interview after you finish all the coding, do all the proper testing, this might be a good source of the video for you to refer to. So the general procedure uh, for a coding interview first, usually try to start to understand the question. So if there's anything unclear, please bring up the question to the interview to clarify. And also at the same time, think about some edge cases. So some people feel very nervous and then they just uh, rush into the coding part too quickly um, without even fully understand the problem, without even communicate the idea how to solve this problem. So this, this could be a red flag. So the first red flag is jump into the coding part too quickly. So the second one, the second part for the procedure is try to convey the idea how to solve this problem. So in this part, you're going to think about the solution, um, try to have a nice good discussion with your interviewer about how to solve this problem, uh, discuss about the runtime, the space, um, space analysis, like do some big old analysis on top of that. Um, so sometimes you may get stuck, um, you may re get really stuck without even able to thinking about uh, a basic idea, a naive solution how to solve this problem. So if you spend like uh, three or four minutes and get stuck there, so um, you may want to ask for some hint from the interviewer. So if you get stuck for the whole 10 minutes, that's not a good thing because you don't even make any progress. So don't be shy if you really get stuck, so just try to ask for help. So think about uh, that your interviewer is one of your peers who work with you day to day. So um, it's okay to ask for some help when you're really in a difficult situation. So uh, for the solution part, you will need to have some active, communica active communication uh, about the solution, uh, about the big analysis, etc. Exact, exact. So if you cannot think about uh, a bad solution, it is okay to come up with, so with something workable and naive solution to solve this problem, and then try to optimize it later on. So um, some, sometimes some people just uh, want to think uh, in a silent way for a couple minutes. So try to tell your interviewer that uh, you want to spend a couple minutes to think about a solution. So if you leave your interview alone and uh, everything is kept silent for a few minutes, then people don't know what is going on. So that could be uh, a red flag during the interview as well. So tell your interviewer uh, what is going on. Uh, so keep, um, don't keep uh, interviewer up to date about what is happening. So like I said, if you want to think in a certain way, terry interior, if you are, want to think loud, that's a good thing. So uh, that's the finding solution part. And the next part is about doing some coding work. So for coding, it's not just uh, to make the code correct. You need to cover all the edge cases. You need to make it correct, of course. And also you need to want to make it readable, which is uh, some people call it maintainable. And also you want to care about the speed because uh, for the coding interview, usually you have, um, so if you have a 45 minutes coding interview, usually you just have like 35 minutes for the real, uh, 35 minutes for the real coding question because usually for the first five minutes, you spend um, uh, the time to do some warm up conversation uh, to, d to talk about your background uh, and then the last five minutes to ask questions with the interviewer about something you're interested in, about the company, something like that. So um, correctness, readability, and the speed. So sometimes people uh, may write the right code, but uh, the code is not maintainable. So that could also be a red flag. So correctness, I think you already know what it is. So make sure the general algorithm is correct and also it cover all the edge cases. So for the readability or the maintainable uh, coding, so what is that? So usually you cover, you should cover the, um, like for example, the naming convention. So don't just uh, name your, um, all your variables as A, B, C, D, E, or uh, whatever. So make a meaningful name for the variable to represent what it is. And uh, maybe, and also some function name, make it more meaningful. 
and also like the formatting, so like the indentation, uh, exact, etc. And also sometimes you may need to uh, decompose a function into some other helper function to enclose some logic into a helper function instead of putting all the logic in the in in a single function when it is very large. So if it, if it is if the if a single function is too large, try to separate into some helper function. Uh, it's okay to first leave the helper function as empty and as some to do and then finish later. Just tell your interviewer what this helper function is about. So speed is more about for you to do some practice in your in your uh, in your preparation steps. And uh, uh, so this part, uh, yeah. So this part, I would say um, some red flag here. I would say don't if you don't think about the edge case. So that's a red flag. And also, uh, code is not readable. That could be also a red flag, and if you don't, if you don't, uh, if you don't finish the coding within the time limitation, that could also be um, something you don't want to, you you don't want to want, want it to happen. And the last part is about testing. So, so some people just forget to do some testing um, uh, in the coding interview. So testing is also a very important part. So if it is a runnable platform, you can set up some test cases uh, to run it. Uh, if it is not runnable, you may need to go through this uh, piece of code step by step, explain how the code is going to work, uh, and uh, try to explain uh, with a uh, with a simple example. And after that, you may come up with some different test cases to try to have good enough test coverage. So this one uh, task like step by step. Step by step uh, explanation, also the coding, uh, also the testing coverage. So this is a general uh, four steps we usually follow in the coding interview. First, understand the problem, and also then think about the solution. After you get an agreement with the interior, do some coding work. After coding, do some testing. So what are the expectations from the coding interview? So people ask me, uh, what are the expectations? So usually the first first thing we think about is communication. So communication, um, so it usually happens in the first step and the second step. So you need to clarify the constraints about this uh, about this coding question. So if the question is too ambiguous for you to understand, please ask the question. If you don't fully understand the problem, there's no way for you to proceed um, because uh, everything. Uh, after, if you don't understand, if you don't understand the question and you proceed, uh, things can be in a totally wrong way. And also, this could be a red flag for the communication part. And also for the solution, uh, for the finding solution part, uh, if you hesitate to explain the solution or if you cannot communicate the solution in a clear way, so people may think. Uh, that you cannot really do communication very well. So communication should be uh, clear. Uh, you can make it succinct, but uh, if it is not succinct enough, uh, it's, it's, it's fine. Um, and also, if it is too hard to explain the solution in English, you can go through examples step-by-step step by step to explain how this uh, piece of code is going to work. So you can draw some graph if there is some whiteboarding stuff. Um, yeah, but use whatever way you feel more comfortable to explain this uh, solution in a clear way. So the first part is about communication. So the second part is about uh, the general data structure and algorithm. So this mostly happens in uh, the second part and the third part. So you should have, uh, so people expect you to have solid knowledge about the data structure and algorithm, and also ap can apply the algorithm and the data structure to solve the problem, to solve the real world problem given to you. So uh, in this part, uh, it's, it's mostly happened in the uh, second part and the third part, but uh, uh, pe usually people think it is happening in the second part because this is the part you're going to use your your knowledge to solve the problem. Um, so like I said, if you cannot think about a uh, most often most solution, you can start with something brute force and, uh, um, and then try to optimize it later on. So um, that's about the data structure and the algorithm part. 
And the next part is about coding. So sometimes people can come up with a good idea how to solve this problem, but uh, they um, they don't have the they lack the coding ability to transfer to transform the idea to the solid code. So for coding, it's mostly about doing some coding practice for you to enhance this part. And for coding, uh, we are mostly looking at whether uh, you can turn your idea into the coding part, and if your code is clean, is correct, is readable, and also if you uh, if you can turn the the code turn the idea into coding uh, in a quick way, in an efficient way. So the last part is about testing. So for testing, like I said, pe some people just uh, miss the testing part. Uh, but for the testing part, uh, what are we caring about? So do some active testing. It's not like uh, if the interviewer asks you to do some testing and you do it. It's more like you, you indicate to your interviewer, OK, I want to do some testing. I want to set up this task is, I set that task is to cover different branches. So this part is mostly about um, setting up the task case um, and uh, explain why you set up this task case uh, and uh, try to have good enough task cases that can have uh, good enough task coverage. So those are the those are the four major parts about the expectation. So communication, uh, try to communicate the idea how to solve this problem in a clear way, ask some good questions to clarify the question, um, and also the second part, data structure algorithm, it's not like you have knowledge, but you still need to show the knowledge you have to to, to solve the real world problem. And for coding, uh, for coding, you, you you can it's about to show your ability to try to turn the idea into solid code and uh, make the code correct, read, readable, and also uh, you are efficient in writing the code. And the last part is about testing. Testing, you have the idea you want to do test, and uh, you can set up proper test cases to have good enough test courage. So I think those are the general steps uh, we follow and uh, that's pretty much it about the content of this video. So, and uh, I think the last thing I want to mention is that uh, usually we spend uh, the last few minutes to ask questions. So don't say you have no questions. Uh, usually ask some questions to show your curiosity um, about the company, about the position you're trying to apply to. Because people don't like uh, candidates that uh, don't have any interest about the company. Uh, so the next the last red flag, I would say it's um, not showing interest uh, in the position or the company. Yeah, so that's pretty much it about this video. Uh, so if you find this video a bit helpful, please uh, give me a thumb up. If you like this video, please help subscribe to this channel. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.